Hello friends, you may be wondering why I am holding this broccoli and uh, this capsicum and the uh, potato and the uh, onion. Simply because when you think of the plant families, you are supposed to know in what way the knowledge is applicable. These are all the regular vegetables that we consume. I don't want to say that all the plant families that you are learning are all meant uh, for understanding applications and uh, that they are vegetables. No, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not meaning that. I want to say that there is a lot of sense in learning plant families. You already know and in the earlier lecture it was told to you that uh, the 400 plus plant families make a lot of difference in our life. When we say that we are depending on plant kingdom, it is really so. So we will come to these uh, various samples later on because this is belonging to uh, the Brassicaceae and this is belonging to Solanaceae and even this is belonging to Solanaceae and so on. Okay, we will have a small demonstration also about uh, all such things little later on. We will now go to the family Solanaceae because we have already covered Malvesi, do you remember? I am sure. If you have not gone through the video from Malvesi, I will strongly suggest that you do it first because that was the family which was taken up as a type, although it is not there in your books, it was taken up as a type to make sure that you understand how to learn a family. And the hibiscus flower, I hope you have got from around uh, your places and you have dissected it. Family Solanus is known as potato family, interesting name. Why it should be potato? Actually, it contains potato, tomato, brinjal, and also capsicum. So you can make a nice rasa bhaji. Potato, tomato, brinjal, capsicum, wonderful. So although it is called as potato family, you can also call it as a brinjal family and nobody can object. Uh, the family has 96 genera and 2000 species. You don't need to remember everything. But we are learning plant families to be more friendly with the plant kingdom. So, 96 genera, you can understand. 96 genera, each, and suppose solanum you take as a genus. Within the solanum, there are so many species. So, every genus will have many species that you know. So, 2000 species. Cosmopolitan. Whenever the word cosmopolitan is used, it means world over. So, you will find solanum sea family members to be distributed world over. Not necessarily all plants are found everywhere. There are certain species of the plants which are restricted. Sometimes they are called as endemic. And you are going to use this word later on in one of your uh, lessons of ecology. Endemism. Endemism is something which is localized, which is usually not supposed to be found elsewhere. But cosmopolitan is something which is everywhere, almost everywhere. Just like Malvesi. Even Malve Malvesi is cosmopolitan. <coughs> About uh, about the roots, stem and leaf, I am not going to talk much because I think there are ordinary things and from the book uh, you can just read about the root, stem and leaf because I think the main focus of learning a plant family must be on flower and because the focus is on flower, naturally we have to understand the inflorescence. Inflorescence is being mentioned and I am taking up these words exactly as they are in the NCRT and sometimes I have to add a few things more. In the state board book, the families are not properly mentioned, uh, not properly described rather. Solitary inflorescence. No. And axillary or cymose as in solanum. What, what is the meaning of all this? Solitary, it means the flower may be single. It, you know, just like in hibiscus, is hibiscus also it is solitary or cymose. Basically, during the course of evolution, probably it was an inflorescence and then ultimately only one flower is left out of the inflorescence. Don't worry much about those things. Axillary. Axillary means something like this. I'll, I'll just uh, draw a simple diagram. Suppose here is the main uh, axis. And suppose this is axillary inflorescence. Here is the, here are the flower. This is the, this is the meaning of the word axillary. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not like that. Uh, axillary here, here, through the axis, through the uh, axial bulb. Uh, it may be sometimes you know if it is axillary, this is extra axillary. So this is axillary inflorescence and this is extra. Extra axillary is that which is not developed from the axil of a leaf. And lots of lots of uh, 
differences are there. Whatever differences, types you have learned, they are good. But they are not the only types. There may be subtypes, there may be a lot of variations. So, even if they are mentioning things like this, auxiliary and extra auxiliary, sometimes, you know, you, you, you may not take them very seriously in the sense, you have not learned that type of morphology. Simos, you should know Simos, every Simos. A Simos interest, suppose this is extra axillary Simos, or this is, a, this is extra axillary Simos, this is axillary Simos, and so on. Most interesting will be the typical feature of the flower. Flower is bisexual and actinomorphic. Side by side, I will write these things. So, what is the meaning of this symbol? Because here I am trying to write down the floral formula. So, are you getting my point? What is the meaning of this? Actinomorphic, regular. And what is the meaning of this? It's bisexual. So these two are covered. Actinomorphic, this one. Are this symbol. And bisexual, this symbol. Calyx 5. 5 symbols, gamosepalus. What is the symbol for calyx? K5. I am keeping in bracket because we have learned that when you keep things in bracket, is it cohesion or addition? Here we are talking of cohesion. What is the meaning of cohesion? When similar members come together and get attached to each other, it is called as cohesion. So this is K5. Then uh, uh, persistent. Well, calyx is persistent. What, what does it mean? Uh, in the demonstration, we are going to show you that in a brinjal, um, you, you know already, suppose here is a brinjal. I'll clean this space once again. So if you have this brinjal, I know brinjal is very strangely being called as eggplant. Uh, usually we never call it as eggplant. It looks like an egg. I don't know. So this is persistent calyx. What do you mean by persistent? That means even after the flower has withered away and even after the fruit has been formed, it is likely that the calyx continues. You know, usually when the fruit formation occurs, the androsium, the gynosium, the calyx and corolla, all are dropped away. But sometimes the calyx remains and when the calyx remains, it is called as persistent calyx. You have actually learned all these things uh, in the morphology lesson. So that's what I am trying to say to you. That either you, if you are, if you are not uh, very good in the morphology lesson, please do it first. Please go through the uh, recorded lecture and uh, make sure that you write things. If not, at least now you should go back from, for each word you should go back to your morphology lesson. The learning of biology is one way easy and one way difficult. We have been constantly trying to tell you that unless you learn a particular lesson carefully, you may not be able to learn the other lessons. Those who are not uh, good at morphology, they will find uh, this part of morphology equally difficult. The basic morphology you should learn. So persistent means they, they remain. You know, in a, we, we, I mean that becomes consumed. You use value dissipation is something that you already know. I'm not going to explain anything about that. Uh, <coughs> Uh, I think I forgot to write about Corolla here. Uh, sorry. So I have written uh, flower cats. I will mention something about Corolla. Mm, I will write it here. Mm. For Corolla, five petals and they are united. So Gamopetalus. Are you understanding what I am trying to write? There are five petals. Symbol for Corolla C. There are five petals and they are united. So there are five petals and there is Gamopetalus. And very interestingly, uh, they uh, make a lot of variety, a lot of variation um, when you are observing different flowers. I don't think uh, more information is necessary. Uh, Androsium five stamens. Androsium five stamens and they are free, so I am not putting them in bracket. And they are epipetalus. What do you mean by epipetalus? This is the symbol for uh, adhesion. When I am drawing a line of this kind from C to A, it means adhesion. Okay, that's androsium. Uh, gynesium bicarpillary syncarpus. Gynesium is this one. G. Bicarpillary syncarpus. So I will write two. Syncarpus, so I am writing in bracket. Whenever you write things in bracket, it means united. And so this is again, this is this is the uh, cohesion for uh, Ganesium. This is uh, cohesion from Kelly for Calyx. Uh, here there is uh, no cohesion. The stamens are free and this is addition. 
Obliques in test you can't show it. Superior, that means the line here. Superior. Bilocular. Bilocular you can't show it uh, in the floral uh, formula. You can show it in the floral diagram, which you already have. You have this sheet. Side by side, you are referring this sheet. Are you, are, you, are you referring? Are you ready with this sheet? And side by side, you are also referring uh, to this diagram sheet that has been provided. This is family solanus. So, in the floral uh, diagram, you can find this. Uh, swollen placenta cannot be shown here. Many ovules, okay, an exhaled placentation, you know, in a section of the ovaries taken, this exhaled placentation. Fruits, actually, there can be many varieties. Capsule and berry, I have written here, but actually, within that, there are so many varieties. So, you can just lightly remember that it may be capsule. For example, for bindi and cotton in the Malvasi, we have said that it is capsule. Similarly, here, capsule type of a fruit is present in uh, some plants uh, um, um, like the tura. In the tura, there is a capsule type of a fruit. The tura belongs to family Solanaceae. And berry, you know, this, this brinjal and all, uh, these are typically the berry, you know, brinjal, tomato, these are all berries. And uh, seeds are many, of course, you find in a brinjal or in a tomato many seeds and they are endospermic. You know, you may feel that oh my god, monopods must have endospermic seeds and the dipods must have a non endospermic seeds. That's not a rule, that is not a rule. In general, dipods will have endospermic, I'm sorry, dipods will have non endospermic and monopods will have endospermic in general, but that's not a rule. In many of the dipods, seeds may be. Um, uh, endospermic or it may be partially endospermic. You know, it's a vast uh, subject, but me. And you must therefore um, be prepared to note the variations and accept them. It is possible that when you learn a certain piece of biology, you feel that that's the only thing, that you don't want to go beyond it. That's not possible. It also means that uh, remembering those things are troublesome. Troublesome? Yes, it is. You are going for medical, right? And going to medical is not, not easy. And you know, you are not learning biology for going to medical. This is something which I am going to reiterate every lecture. You are learning biology for the sake of joy. And if you are not enjoying biology, then I think you should leave biology. And if you leave biology, then I, I don't have any more comment. I mean to say, learn to enjoy. It is troublesome in the sense, it is an opportunity that you get to learn things. And so you must write. You know, when you write things, you can remember better. Writing one time is remembering uh, better. That's how this chart is there. See, here is the Solanus, uh, the Solanus family. And here are the characters you can write of Calix, Carola, and Russian, Galatian. When you write this, what are you going to write? It's only the, the terms. In fact, this is what, it's, um, what we are going to expect from you for submission. And then we will uh, provide you uh, a signal from our side. So you must complete these things. You must work. You must work a lot. Whether it is recorded lectures or whether it is in classroom, situation is same. Those who work, well, they get benefited. Those who don't, they are always uh, lag behind. That should not happen. So this is solanacy. Uh, I think this is there is a floral uh, formula. Floral formulas are important. You know, floral formula. You should be in a position to identify the family. Suppose they give which is, which of the following is the floral formula for solanacy, and if they give many floral formulae, four options, then you should pick up the floral formula for solanacy. The reverse is also true. Then we give a floral formula in the statement, question statement, and then they may give names of the four families. So both ways. And you'll get practice for such things. I think uh, maybe that earlier uh, question papers you have something like this. Um, maybe that uh, we will provide you more practice about it. So that's the general understanding uh, about the family uh, Solanaceae. There can be a there can be so much explanation available, but minimum this much is expected. Uh, with that, now we will revise the same family with the help of uh, this diagram sheet that you have. I'll explain this to you. Okay? And uh, you also have uh, um, this one uh, in your NCRT. Okay? Diagram. And in the, in the state board book also. So let us revise it quickly. So <coughs> here is the picture that you have got in your diagram sheet. And don't worry what this species is, uh, Solanum chorvum, don't worry about all that thing. You can see very clearly the inflorescence. See, uh, this is uh, axillary inflorescence, uh, and this is the flower where the, the sepals are divided and uh, stamens are attached to. This is the diagram to show that the stamens are uh, uh, attached to petals. 
And this is typical in the section of the ovary. You can see the exile presentation. And uh, here is the floral uh, diagram. Uh, in the floral diagram, what are you going to observe? Yeah, and these are all the outermost. What does it indicate? The calyx world, that means these are all the sepals. And inside these, these are the petals. And these uh, petals are uh, united to each other. And so it's a kind of a gamma condition. And here you can see uh, this, what does this indicate? Androsium. And the and stamens are attached to petals. So it is epipetalous condition. And this is the section of the ovary. Uh, so that is it. Actually, when we say the carpels are two, you may say that the carpels are four here. No, there is so much of variation. For this particular species, the situation may be different. And uh, if you observe your uh, NCRT page, um, here the bicarbonary condition is being uh, shown. So, don't worry about such variations. It is not a fixed rule. Sometimes, you know, the two carpels may be four carpels also. Because this is, for example, this picture is for uh, this particular uh, species and for which you they appear to be. Or it may be so that there are two carpels and then they have it divided into four chambers. So, don't worry much about that. Uh, if uh, you are looking at page number 80 of the NCRT, there is a diagram and if you carefully look at the ovary, well, there are clearly the, the bicarbonary syncarpus uh, condition with the two, um, two chambers, uh, ovaries, two chambers. Um, again, here they are not showing uh, the sepals united, but in the NCRT book they are showing united because it is a different species. What is this particular diagram uh, 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 which is given in the NCRT is for Solanum nigrum, that is Macoy. The Solanum nigrum, that is Macoy, which is called as a nightshade plant. So, you know, when you say that the sepals are united, well, in some plants it may not be united, for this plant, no. therefore, not necessarily exactly uh, the um, Every species of that ceramic seem will have exactly the same feature, some, some, some variation after. So here the sepals seem to be free, but uh, in many of the ceramic families, the sepals are united. Uh, I don't want to comment more on uh, this particular diagram, just have a quick look at the uh, floral formula. Again, look here. What is this? Actinomorphic flower, bisexual, sepals file, united. That is uh, gamosepalus, this is gamopetalus. Uh, Androsium 5 united, in this particular case it may be so, but in the regular uh, many of the species, the Androsium is not united. In the Gynesium too, <coughs> that is superior over it. Variations are always there in nature. You know, a family with so many genera, 96 genera and so many species, you can't expect exactly the same, uh, exactly the same features. Mm, yeah, so I can say that the these are the things, potato, solanum tuberosum, this is capsicum, this is lycopersicon. I will have a small demonstration later on, lycopersicon, lycopersicum. This is brinjal, solanum melangina, solanum melangina, you should definitely know. And uh, what are the other names uh, there, we just have a quick uh, reading about it. You have uh, in your, on your page the examples. Uh, spice chili, but then actually the genus they have not mentioned. Yeah, medicinal plant is Belladonna, um, Ashwagandha. Uh, these are two separate plants, and Belladonna is not the same as Ashwagandha. Uh, I think we'll have some more uh, screen show later on, that time we'll be learning. Then there is uh, Datura. Datura is very important. I think it is a wild plant seen many times, but not these days. I think uh, earlier months, uh, in the month of August, September, you can see a lot of Datura. Datura. Uh, the dura, there are dura metal and there are many other species. Uh, yeah, Sestrum nocturnum, Rakrani, you know, uh, you have uh, great fragrance at night, the, the Sestrum nocturnum. And, and so we are going to cover some of these examples. And tobacco, of course. Uh, tobacco is something which is the plant of which many researchers were done earlier. And tobacco is um, belonging to Suranasi family. I think that should be enough about the Solanaceae presently. We will now go for the next family that is Fabaceae. Let's now move on to family Fabaceae. Actually the original name was Papillionaceae and this is better name. But somehow you know, 
uh, in taxonomy, the names of genera, species, or the families, they change. You know, that's a kind of uh, international understanding. And there are taxonomists uh, who think that it is better to change. So, papillon is a papillon. What do you mean by papillon? Papillon is a butterfly, right? So, maybe a butterfly of this kind. You can imagine a butterfly. Oh my god. It's a butterfly. And you know, the flower of this family probably looks something like a butterfly. Not exactly, but you know, the, the, you know the auxiliary situation uh, of this kind. So, there is a posterior standard uh, petal and there are two lateral petals which are called as wings and then there are two smaller ones on the anterior side uh, which uh, make a kind of a boat like structure, keel. So, this is very different. You know, the auxiliary situation is very different as compared to the valvate and imbricate uh, and twisted situations. So, I think that that's an analogy, but papillon, papillon is a butterfly. So, papillon and she is carola, beautiful carola. Uh, in fluorescence, there can be many subtypes of racemos, you know, just remember racemos. Yes, bisexual and zygomorphic. I think I'll just write down side by side. So, this is, and you know, it is not actinomorphic, it is zygomorphic. Do you understand why it is zygomorphic, flower? Look at this particular uh, design. You know, when the five petals are there and they are distributed radially, then you can say it is um, re the regular flower, actinomorphic. This is not actinomorphic because there is a, what kind of symmetry? The symmetry here is bilateral and this is a symbol to indicate that. In fact, amongst the families that you are learning, this is the only family to have this symbol. What does it mean? It is, uh, it is zygomorphic. There is a, uh, it is a, uh, Mm, a kind of uh, not an irregular thing, bilateral is symmetrical. Then bisexual, bisexual symbol is always like this. Uh, five sepals, gamo, sepalus, which has got valvet or imbricate distillation. So, but let me tell you, I'm 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 writing here sepals five and united, but there can be many varieties because it's again a very big family, five hundred genera and ten thousand species. Oh my god, and you don't expect that in every species exactly it will be uh, united. But usually it is uh, 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 it is united, that's why. And uh, uh, you know, situation cannot be shown here. You know the valvate and the implicate situation. Uh, for, for the curl, that is five petals. Oh my god, I'm sorry, sorry, very sorry, sorry. This is okay, but then for curl, I'll write five petals and free. Okay, but sometimes they may be partially united. Polypetalus. Papillion issues, that means auxiliary situation, which I already explained. There is a posterior standard and two lateral wings and a keel. You know, the androsium and dinosium are present here. We will try to show this in the demonstration that in this small boat shaped structure, there is a, there are the 10 stamens and a single carpel. Uh, androsium 10 stamens, diadelphy. Do you remember what is diadelphy? Do you know what is adelphy? Adelphy, monoadelphy, diadelphy. Polyadelphy, you should refer back to the morphology lesson. So, androsium, um, it is actually nine stamens together and one stamen free. Nine plus one condition. You can expect the things like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine together. These are the stamens and one stamen is free. So, this is nine because they are united, they are written like this uh, plus one. So, nine plus one. Uh, uh, Diathecus, what do you already know? In the Malvesi, we have monothecus. You know, the anther is monothecus because there is only one lobe. Here, there are two lobes. Diathecus. Gynetium, monocarpillary. Uh, if I want to show the gynetium, I can show it here. Uh, gynetium is monocarpillary. You know, this is a single gynetium. Uh, it's something like this. This is the gynetium. This is the ovary, the style and the stem, single carpel. So I will write it here, gynetium 1. Uh, ovary superior, uh, it means I will just write, uh, whenever superior that means to write below, either below the G or below 1, I mean both are applicable. If it is, if it is a, um, 
uh, inferior ovary, then you have to write it on the top. This line is on the top. Don't worry about it. For this, it is ovary superior. Unilocular, many ovules, single style. I think those cannot be shown in the formula. Uh, and the fruit is legume. These are all legumes. You understand this? These are legume types of fruit. Shenga, where you So, Shenga, there is Ganaspati. Not every, uh, not necessary that. Uh, there can be some other families in which there are legumes possible, but here Fabius is that there are legumes. And many, many of these are these used as vegetables regularly. Again, there is a lot of there for the um, economic importance of this family. And seeds are one too many and non endospermic because if, if I open this, you can see there will be many seeds. So I'll just uh, open this casually. You can see many seeds inside. It's this simple. There's the many seeds. As you can see here, this is what is happening. That's uh, I will now uh, uh, help uh, the division of this family with the help of the uh, transforms. Uh, let me correct myself in this particular formula uh, for calyx. Uh, you know, it is uh, it is generally shown to be like this. Uh, 1 plus 2 plus 2. So this is indicated as 1 plus 2 because they are free. You know, this is free and these two are free. And plus 2. This is uh, in bracket because these are united. So instead of writing 5 directly, it is better to write 1 plus 2 plus uh, 2. And that is usually the way uh, it is it is shown. Okay. So K5 in bracket, sometimes the, 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 the symbols can be free also. Petals, uh, some are free, three are free, one, two, three, and two are united, and the rest of the things are like this. Okay, that's it. Uh, this diagram sheet is available with you, and from that uh, you can find out the plant is Spicum sativum. And when it is lin, what does it mean? The original name suggested by Linnaeus. Linnaeus was a great, great taxonomist, and he provided 4,000 names. Oh my god, to provide 4,000 names. It means the person, it's not just about the vocabulary, it's about the knowledge because when you have to write a particular, uh, I mean, when you have to suggest a particular name, it has to be some meaning. Anyway, that's different. This is the plant with which uh, Mendel worked. So, this is by some sort of I just quickly read the stem erect or climber. This is a climber because you know, uh, there are tendencies you can find. Uh, and the, the tendrils. Uh, make uh, the climbing of this plant possible mm, and roots are with nodules and stem is erect or climber okay and leaves alternate pinnately compound as you can see pinnately compound leaves mm, leaf base uh, pervinate as you can see find here and stipulate stipules I don't find here any stipules okay and venation reticulate etc I think roots can leave characters. Well, for NCQ, you can't uh, say <laughs> they can put up uh, that particular character uh, in the NCQ form, but usually possibility is less. Possibility is more for NCQs on the flower. Uh, flower uh, inflorescence is uh, decimos. Now, in, in inflorescence has not been shown here. Uh, bisexual zygomatic we already considered. Uh, consider here, you know, this is the vexillum, you know, this is the standard. And these are two lateral petals, and these two are actually united. That's why one plus two, one free, two free, and these are united to make a keel. You can see here. This is the one standard. These are the two laterals, which are called as wings. They are also free, and these two get united to make uh, a boat-shaped structure. And in this boat-shaped structure, you have the androecium and the gynecium. So the androecium and gynecium are all. In Present all inside this board shape structure. Mm, then this is the section of the ovary. You know, uh, the this is actually a section of the ovary, mm, a transverse section of the ovary. Actually, the ovary will be like this. You know, single carpel. And you have uh, many ovules. This is the ovary. This is the style, and this is the stigma. So stigma, style, and ovary. And uh, 
there will be many ovules. What kind of placentation you are expecting? Marginal placentation is there. So if you take a length, lengthwise section, you will get marginal placentation. But if you are taking the cross section, then how this cross section will appear? The cross section will appear to be like this. So these are tears of the ovary. Okay? So the transverse section. If you take a longitudinal section, then the single row of ovules will be seen attached to this particular margin. And you know this is the ventral margin to which it is attached. You should know all those things. I mean, once again, you have to know the dorsal margin and the ventral margin. Morphology is very interesting. It may be in the beginning complicated, but then you have to put a lot of efforts. Are you studying biology seriously? Are all your uh, precious time you are spending for physics? I think my general uh, observation is that most of the students continuously are under the pressure of physics and keep on solving physics sums and ultimately they score low in physics. Let me tell you very frankly. And they neglect biology and also chemistry. What is the result? They never get selected. So do only limited physics. Do physics regularly, no, not limited. Don't spend all your time for physics. Physics is only 25%, biology is 50%. If you are weak in morphology, stop physics immediately. Because ultimately you are appearing for need. And need is all meant for medical admissions. I am going to continuously bombard you with this kind of statements because it is you people who say that you want to go to medical and you are not doing biology and chemistry enough. Okay, so that's the point. So morphology lesson you should know well and you should know well this is the longitudinal section of the ovary and the transverse section is here. Mm, that's it. Of about the floral uh, uh, the diagram, I'm going to talk about floral diagrams of all the families later on. So they mentioned they have mentioned some examples. Let us see these various uh, examples which are in the book. Um, yeah, uh, all the various pulses. I know these are the various pulses which we are going to study. Mm. This is the pulses. Are you are we getting it? So pulses we are going to get even the uh, even this one. Groundnuts, allergies, hypogea. Okay, we, are, we are going to learn all that. Mm, all the pulses. Arhar, arhar is tur. A kajan is kajan. We are going to learn that. Same. These are the same. This we are going to learn. Mung and soya bean. Soya bean, you know, you these days this more easily available. Indigo fera, a dye, and we are going to show you some plant. Indigo fera. Fibers, sun hemp, and fodder, sylvanian, trifolium, ornamental plants, lupin, sweet pea. There are two types of pea, sweet pea and garden pea. Okay. Um, and medicine, muliati. This uh, muliati plant, uh, you know, they are mentioning some of these plants which are not sometimes available even on the net. We will try to show you these plants actually after some time. What is the importance of these uh, names of these plants? Yeah, from an MCQ point of view, let me tell you. Suppose they will put up this particular plant. Sesbania and Trifolium belong to. Sesbania and Trifolium belong to. And there will be four options, the four families. And you have to choose which is that family to which they belong. That much only. The reverse is also possible. Suppose they will write the name of a family. Family Fabaceae. Which of the following plants belong to family Fabaceae and they give you four options. So you have to remember it. And therefore, this kind of a chart making is a very important activity where examples, you know, if you feel that this is not enough, you can attach more paper or you can use the remaining space. Be very careful and very sincere. Alternately, you can also side by side make another chart in your notebook. Um, the meetings are being held and many of you have attended the meetings. And some of you will be attending the meeting in the next uh, two weeks. And we are going through your notebooks and some of you are maintaining the notebooks nicely. I am sure those are the people who are going to get the benefit of learning. That's it. So, uh, we will now go for the next family that is Liliaceae. I think now we are learning family Liliaceae, which is once again a cosmopolitan family. You know, Solanaceae, Fabaceae, Liliaceae. They are all members of this family spread all over the world, so it's being called as cosmopolitan. Oh my god, 250 genera and 2500 species. What are, what are those plants uh, which belong to Liliaceae? Uh, most commonly, the, on, the uh, garlic, Allium sativum, and then onion, and this is Allium sepa, 
and there are so many LLAC members that we are going to talk about and I think uh, in the demonstration and also in the slideshow we will be able to uh, understand it. So LLAC, inflorescence, once again solitary cymos I told you what it means, often umbellate crystals, umbel you know mm, this is the umbel, umbel crystals is something, uh, crystals are like this. I think in your diagram sheet probably uh, it is here, I'll just check and I'll, I'll bring to you the diagram sheet. Uh, I don't need to draw the diagram. Yeah, you can see the family LLAC, the, the umbel inflorescence in cluster. So each one of them is an umbel, like this. So like that. So cluster of many umbel inflorescence, that is called as uh, the uh, umbel clusters. It means in some of the LLAC species that may be uh, solitary cymos or it may be umbellate clusters and there can be a lot of variations. Flower is bisexual. So I'll side by side uh, right it's it's no doubt actinomorphic and bisexual. So that is how you know you should be able to match together the details of the statements about the different uh, aspects of the flower with the floral uh, formula using the appropriate symbol. So it's bisexual Actinomorphic, actinomorphic is simple, this is bisexual. Perian, so I have star marked this. Why? Because Kerix and Corona individually are absent. What is perian? Remember what is perian? You know, in some in some flowers, in some plants, in some species, separate Kerix and Corona may not be present. Instead, the two are represented by a common world known as perian. And what are the members of the perian known? Members of the perian, they are being called as tepals, not sepals or not petals, it is tepals. Oh, oh. tepals. Kadaji, tona sabbe sa hongi laas papla. Kelix karama mehti hai, but periantas mahitne aasa nahi hota gama. Marfali sangla barka ne abdhas kara. Tepals, members are called as tepals. And when tepals are said, that the members symbol periant sa ta, which is KDC and a name, PA is of the periant. Uh, Perian, six uh, tepals. Uh, you have seen that uh, in the Fabaceae and Solanaceae and in the Malvaceae, the flowers were all pentamerous. Everything was in terms of five, usually five, ten, etc. Here, this is trimerous. And this is a family which belongs to monocots. Malvaceae, Solanaceae, Fabaceae, these are dicot families. And this is a monocot family. Okay? This is monocot family. You should know that this is a monocot. This is the only monocot family which is there in your syllabus. Actually, there are hundreds of monocot families. Poesy, for example, Gramini, which I am going to explain later on only for those who are interested in Olympiads and KVPY. Two families that is reserved for a special lecture that is um, KVPY Olympiad uh, requirement and it is going to be Poesy um, and uh, most important, Asterisy. But I will not mention that just now. Poesy and Liliacy, they are monocot families. Uh, Perian 3 plus 3, you know, they are in two, two sets of arrangement, 3 and 3, and they are free. So I am not putting them in bracket. Uh, Androsium 6 tamens, again 3 plus 3. 6 tables, 3 plus 3, they may be free or united because now, I, you know, there is a lot of variation again. So I just now said that they are free and I am putting in bracket because I am trying to put the things exactly as it is in your NCRT book so that you, you don't uh, need to worry. Even if it is free, that is quite okay. So in the in the NCRT, I will uh, I'll just check whether it is 3 plus 3. I think it is perian for 3 plus 3. Yeah, but not necessarily. There are many LLAC members where the perianth is free. But because, once again, there are... 250 to 2500 species. You don't expect that in the every species it will be like this. So, okay. Often united into a tube, but not always. Uh, while by distillation, that's obvious. Androsium 6 tamens, they are free. Androsium 3 plus 3. Again, against, these are all against uh, these uh, tables. And then, epip, it's not be epipitalis, it should be epitipalis. The word should be. Epitipalus. What do you mean the epitipalus? Sometimes this epitipalus is also called as ep, uh, epiphyllus. Epitipalus. 
because they are attached to tepals. That's why epitepals, which is sometimes called as epiphyllus. Gynoecium tricarpillary. Uh, look at the look at your diagram sheet. Uh, you can see the E section. You know here you will see the section of the ovary with you know how to know how to know from the uh, different symbols diagrams that is the bicarpillary or tricarpillary. Usually it is possible to do it with the help of the section of the ovary. Here the ovary section shows three carpels, so tricarpillary, sin carpel because they are united, and ovary superior that means the flower is hypokinous. Trilocular, as you can see, the ovary is having uh, three locules with many ovules and axillary placentation. Uh, fruit is either capsule or uh, sometimes berry, and seeds are endospermic. Uh, so I will continue to complete this gynoecium three united and superior. That's it. So this becomes the total formula for Liliaceae. And there are uh, certain plants which we are going to show. You know the agave and yucca plants. Have you heard of these things? Oh, you have heard the aloe vera. Very popular. This is very popular being lots of products from aloe vera. <laughs> that is Liliaceae. You know the asparagus, shatavari. That's also Liliaceae. And onion and uh, um, garlic, they all belong to uh, the Lilies. Again, you know, every family will have certain things uh, which are related to our food or uh, some other properties. So, that is about the family Lilies. In fact, we want to take one more family because in, the, in your uh, NCIT, there is a, a page where the Brassicus family has been mentioned. We will go for that now. So, this is the picture and view of the family uh, Liliaceae, you have exactly this picture. Alien step up, the onion. Okay, you put uh, this in the soil and if you take a kind of body plus and then there is a there is a branch that leads to the inflorescence and the inflorescence is a cluster of umbrage. Um, every flower will have these features. Uh, you will have the Three sepals and three tepals. Three sepals may be united or free, and the three tepals may be united or free, but we are going by NCRT, so whatever is there in the NCRT will find why? Because they have given one typical example in the NCRT, so also they are also giving the alien sepa. In alien, uh, in alien uh, sepa, uh, whatever is the condition is being shown here. But remember, there are Thousands of families and uh, thousands of species, and in each family, uh, each species, there has to be some difference. Uh, you can see the flower, you can see the tepals, not the calyx and carpels, but the tepals, and the stamens, six stamens, and the tricarp of the ovary, etc. And this section of the ovary, you can see, and you can see tricarp of the uh, ovary with three compartments, and uh, you can see the ovules. You have never seen, usually, we never see the fruit of Liliaceae. Typically, many of you may have seen the onions everybody sees, but it's a kangaji pathe mate, but up in shape, that's a pressure. Where the umbilical the clusters of umbilical inflorescence can be seen, and later on, the fruits of the fruits of the seeds of the kangaji is a margachi ghost. Onion seeds are very costly because they are the way that's how the onions are uh, onions are cultivated. There's a kind of vegetative propagation of mine. मरास वाटता कि थोड़ा दिशा का करें अपने बगने ची बुक्ती पाए जे इतने तरह के शोध लगाए जे तर एक ऐसा तिकाई बोलते हैं करो शक्के सो इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग अने अपना नाशिक जिला को एक सरी फेमस है कांग्रेस ऐसे तो अपने लगा रचित है उधर थोड़ा सीधे कांडा बिकॉल जब उसके बाद मगा पंडित क्या तो मैंने कहा है एग्जांपल से कि ग्लोरी लिली मुझे ग्लोरी उसका सुपर बाय है ये बाला तो तुम लोगों से कहा चिल रहा है आई जस्ट रीड दैट वन सेकेंड ग्लोरी लिली ग्लोरी उसका सुपर बाय सोर्स ऑफ मेडिसिन एलो वेजिटेबल्स एस्पेरेगस कोल्चिसिन कोल्चिसिन लेट मी टू शो यू दैट प्लांट एन इम but you can't say 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 I think that is about the family Liliaceae and Okay, so we're going to revise it. 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 We're going to revise it.
की तुम्हाला परत परत रेफर करायची गरज पडायला नको तिथली लेवल शेतीची तीच परत पडाय गुडगायचं असं तरी आम्ही करत नाही सावकाश घेतो शांतपणे घेतो काही काहींना तुम्हाला ते खूप जास्त रिपीटेड होणार असं वाटत असेल जे तुमच्या की थोडंसं जास्त अभ्यास करून पटकन पुढे जातात पण आपण हा जो सगळा शिक्षणाचा प्रकल्प आहे आपला हा सगळ्यांसाठी आहे त्यामुळे तुम्ही पट काही जण फास्ट शिकतात काही जण स्लो शिकतात इट्स ओके स्लो स्लो लर्निंग आहे म्हणून काही ते वाईट नसते इट्स वाईट गुड ओके इट्स गो फॉर नाव ब्रासिक लिटल बिट अबाउट ब्रासिक असी फॅमिली ब्रासिक असी विच अर्लियर वॉज बीन कॉल एज फॅमिली क्रिसिफे बिकॉज दे हॅव मेन्शन दिस ऑन पेज सेव्हन्टी एट दे आर नॉट मेन्शन डिटेल्स दे हॅव ई गिव्हन ओनली द फ्लोरल डायग्राम अँड फ्लोरल फॉर्म्युला बट दॅट इज इनफ फॉर दॅम इट इज इनफ टू आस्क क्वेश्चन बिकॉज मीन दे हॅव गिव्हन फ्लोरल डायग्राम अँड फ्लोरल फॉर्म्युला इट इज सपोज टू नो इट सो लेट इज गो इन टू ऍटलीस्ट सम डिटेल्स ऑफ द फॅमिली क्रुसिफेरी रेसिमोज इन्फ्लुएन्स नॉट वेरी इट्स 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 सम काइंड ऑफ रेसिमोज इन रेसिमोज इन्फ्लुएन्स Calyx of four sepals, polysepals. I don't think that's very important. But then these four sepals are present in uh, two uh, arrangements: little outer two and little inner two. So two plus two actually. Important and interesting is the corolla. Four petals: one, two, three, and four. Polypetals. Petals are free and. Cruciform. The petals are arranged in such a way that they make a cross. Can you see this? They are making a kind of a cross. That's how the family was originally being called as Cruciferi. You can easily uh, think of uh, a Cruciferi family. You know, almost anywhere and almost any time of the year, mustard plants are growing. Cruciferi is very famous uh, example of the Cruciferi is mustard plant, Mori, because you know it grows very fast. and usually year round somewhere or the other it is growing i'm sure near your place where you stay you'll be we have able to show you uh, most of plant today so there if you find there are small yellow flowers and the petals will be like a cross four petals polypetals cruciform and to show there is a peculiarity there are six stamens six stamens and tetradiamens four are taller here and they are to the inner side and two are slightly to the outer side two are shorter so two shorter outer and four taller inner two smaller outer four taller inner total six stamens this particular condition is called as tetradiamens so tetra four and here two carnation two carpels two carpels falsely bilocular actually what happens is there is so much of variation in the plant world that here there are two carpels and you were expect they must be fused and even if suppose carpels are fused you can expect two chambers it's not compulsory consider there may be some family which has got five carpels five carpels may be fused but all the fused arrangement may show only one compartment in malvesi there are five carpels You have not the margins, so I am referring to that. In margins, there are five carpels and there are five compartments. Here there are two carpels, and even if they are fused, that's not correct fusion. There is a bilocular condition because of a false partition. You will then ask me why false partition, which is called as epilem. If suppose it was basically by by carpillary syncarpus with single locus by carpillary syncarpus with one locus combined combined chambers however in that combined chamber additional tissue develops and that additional tissue is in the form of a septum which is a partition which is being called as rectum if you remember this one it will be good in your diagrams also they are trying to show you so in this particular diagram they are trying to show you a rectum you can see here the rectum and of course in every false shape there is a false uh, replum and therefore there is a false shape uh, that is what uh, is limitation in learning uh, morphology or for that matter anything in biology the science is so huge that a single isolated reference like this some students will find it difficult but yes you understand is also one more type of variation that there is a bicarpillary condition 
uh, uh, which is uh, ovary, which is uh, this is a section of the ovary, uh, and which is a uh, bilocular, and there is a false partition, and there are ovules inside. Let us see this thing. Actually, when the ovary, you know, ovary means uh, ultimately it is going to be like this, you can imagine, you know, ultimately it is a kind of a special fruit known as silica, and uh, when you you when you find it, when, when the, the ovary becomes fruit, uh, it will dehyce and it will, it, will, it will dehyce, the part of false partition will be seen here, and you know the seeds are attached to the false partition. Like that. So these are the seeds that are. It's not a legume. Don't uh, don't get confused. Legume is different and uh, silica is different. I think silica is uh, one type of fruit. At least it was mentioned to you while fruits uh, were considered. Kasas to dumche insya ke mein tere fruits wada kai fasa dil nahi. But ithe wada dil silica hoti hai. Number wada kaise thi? Maine dumcha brasika seeds ke page jawar directly ne par indirectly apichhi thi ke tumhara silica mai kare, false problem mai kare. To wahan the mai. Okay. So this is how mm, these are the typical features of the uh, family Brassicaceae. It's a floral formula and floral diagram. Huh? It's a floral diagram. One, two, three, four. Four. Inner two and outer two. Clear. Inner two, outer two. Two plus two. There are kind of two plus two. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. And uh, there are six stamens, four inner and two outer. And this is the ovary with a false reculum, false uh, septum that is part of the reculum. And I have total formula. Okay? But if you have a monkey, you can see that 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 so flower is actinomorphic, fine. Flower is bisexual, yes. It is common heads. Nantar prashnito calyx 2 plus 2 and free it. Which are 4 sepals and those 4 sepals are um, arranged in 2 sets. And then corolla uh, which is again 2 plus 2 and they are free. 2 plus 2 is color. Uh, and then you will have androsium, uh, which is 4 plus 2. It's a of free abaka. So it's very clear. Uh, yes. 2 plus 4 mana 4 plus 2 mana. Gynesium, uh, there are two carpels and uh, ovaries. So we get it. But Lakshad Gya asset level for me to work. So we have a Lakshad Gya for me to work. तुम्हारा लक्षण खेलो पहले मैं क्या कहा अपन टैक्स शुक्र बगा सरनसी फेबेसी लिनियसी आउट ऑफ टैक सरनसी एंड फेबेसी हैव बीन डाइकॉर्ड एंड लिनियसी हैज बीन मनोपार्ट पर इनका प्रासिक ऐसे दिस इज डाइकॉर्ड ये सब डायरेक्ट उठे पेज पर उल्लेख नहीं पर मतलब ये डायग्राम दिले फोरल डायग्राम वाले Cauliflower, Fulkobi, Cabbage, Gatta Kobi, Pan Kobi. So cauliflower, cabbage, radish, mula, broccoli. As the broccoli is It's very similar to the cauliflower. And most common mustard. So mustard plant is a pine. It's like pungent smell as well. Sulfur is a content cook just as well. So you can buy it as well. No alcohol, turnip. Can you buy it as well? Interests in the Bhushka. The he is a family, family, brassicacy or family cousin.